Welcome to Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in the San Fernando Valley, joined by Bob Blumenfield. He represents significant portions of the San Fernando Valley on the Los Angeles City Council. And I want to speak with you, sir, about homelessness. And what's unique about the homeless crisis we face today, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we would see homeless if we went to Skid Row. Now we see homeless in Canoga Park, in Reseda, in Tarzana, in your district, when we would never have seen them. What's going on? Yeah, and it's been a, a big increase. The la this mm. last year, we right. measure it, we do the homeless count. Uh, in the city alone, it went up, overall in the city, 11%. Right. But in the San Fernando Valley, it went up 30%. Mm. Uh, and in fact, we just finished now the, the homeless count. Right. I, I sponsored the sponsored out of my office where we gathered uh, volunteers together to uh, go out into the community and count the homeless as part of this large homeless count. So we'll find Why out. Why is that important to do? Well, you know, like with any any problem, the first step is to measure it right. and to understand, you know, what uh, what the problem looks like, right. who is out there. Uh, and, and with homelessness, you really have to be boots right. on the ground. That's why you need so many volunteers to do it. We're waiting for the numbers, right. but last year's numbers were shocking. Yeah. Um, close to 50,000 homeless. This is countywide. Countywide, yeah. But we're a county of 10 million, so 50,000, that is a real number. And, you know, it used to be that New York was the homeless capital of, of America or San Francisco or Miami, but now we are. Well, and, and, it's, and the homelessness is also not a monolithic problem right. in the sense that we have, we have veterans who are suffering from PTSD and other ailments. But with veterans, we also have some federal money and, a, and a, another route. And what's interesting right. about veterans, sir, and I think that you would uh, agree, if there's a bright spot yeah. in the homeless crisis is that we are defeating veterans' homelessness. That is one population where the numbers are going down. Numbers are going down. We have resources to put at that, but we still have to get the folks Fair. Uh, to the resource, and there still is quite a dramatic number of our veterans, unconscionable numbers, right. uh, out on the street. So that's, that's one group. We also have you know, folks who are addicted, right. uh, mentally ill, and, and the addiction issues, some of the, the street drugs have, have you know, whether it's methamphetamines mm -hmm. or, um, and others have gone down in price and they have become more prevalent. The challenge there, I understand, is that we can have services available, but if these folks are service resistant, there's nothing that we can really do. Um, I, I, I don't want to say that's a huge number, but I think it's a significant uh, minority that it, it's do, a, don't want services. It's a significant number, but it's also, it's not the whole picture. It's important to realize the diversity of the homeless population. You have also in that group a lot of people who have just fallen on hard right. times. Uh, you have, you know, the domestic violence numbers are through the roof for the women who are homeless. Uh, and, and part of it has to do with the affordability issue in L.A. You know, the cost of housing has gone up. Uh, income inequality has right. uh, is expanded. The gap is wider. The gap is wider. It's very hard, you know, for, for working families to live in Los Angeles. What's remarkable to me about Los Angeles is that in November, Los Angeles voters were presented with a whole host of measures that would increase revenue. Translation, increase taxes. And in every opportunity, they voted yes. They voted yes on the transportation tax, that's countywide, but in the city of Los Angeles, the voters opened their arms and voted for HHH, which was specifically for the homeless population. How will HHH help us defeat homelessness? And, and it's not a, it's not a cure-all. I know. Uh, but it is significant. It's $1.2 billion. Right. Um, and it's going to allow us to make real progress on building housing right. for homeless and for low income. But we need the county then to provide the services. Is that accurate? The, the county provides most of the services. The city does some. But, okay. Uh, and in fact, the county's going to measure coming up on the ballot. Right, right. Measure H uh, coming up in March very, very soon. And we'll see if, if, if the county voters are, are I mean, also... It's a different electorate. There may be a hangover of, you know, we passed Prop 30 extension. We passed school bonds and, and uh, Measure M. And... Right. But sometimes you need, you know, you need to have, you know, 
shelter. And for, for many folks, you also need to have, in order for it to be successful, you need to have those wraparound services. We opened up uh, just recently in uh -huh. my district yeah. uh, a 94-unit uh, building for formerly homeless folks. But it also includes its permanent supportive housing, uh -huh. and it includes the wraparound services. Which are so critical. Yeah. The permanent supportive housing, that's HHH. I mean, that, yeah. that's the focus. Yeah. Um, I also want to talk about what happened in November, and that was we had a measure on the ballot known as Prop 64. Yeah. Six years ago, I think it was, the voters were asked uh, statewide to legalize marijuana. Yeah. The voters said no, Prop 19. Even in L.A. County, the voters said no. In November, overwhelmingly passes, even in L.A. County, yeah. especially L.A. County. So now L.A. City and L.A. County is faced with, what do we do? Right. And the voters are going to be asked what to do in March. Yep. Tell and, us about and it. And in March, there's going to be two, you know, when marijuana was legalized, mm -hmm. um, it didn't automatically, it did, it did allow individuals to carry, to, to have marijuana and smoke marijuana in their... I believe in, it, by in, the way. In, yeah, I know. I mean, can you believe it? I, I just can't believe it. It's legal. Yeah. You can have up to six plants in right. your in your own home as long as they're, you know, properly um, confined. Right, of course. Uh, but then the the big the question, and then and the state has set up a whole bureaucracy for dealing with the sort of health and welfare issues. Right. You know, what 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 can be allowed where cultivation. But then it's up to the cities is. to come up with time, place, and manner, and figure out. And in fact, the the Prop sixty four gives the cities a timeline. We have to do this by January 1 of 2018. Right. And now, do you need to go to the voters, or is that a decision that's been made by the council? You don't need to go to the voters to regulate. OK. You do need to go to the voters if you want to add additional tax. And I want to ask about the tax, because Measure M, which I understand is the measure that is receiving significant support, yes. um, will seek a regulatory element as well as a taxing element. Yes. A little concerned, at least some, about the tax in that, you have the state tax, you have a county tax, you have a city tax, and if you have all these taxes attached, all of a sudden the black market looks pretty good, even though it's legal. Well, it's true for a lot of things. This mm -hmm. is a gross receipts tax. Uh, it, which, which would mean it's, it's not a sales tax, it's no. to the businesses? The sales tax is, is imposed on the state level. Right, but you could pass a sales tax technically. We, we could, yeah. um, but this is, this is in conformance with, with other I industries. It's a 5% uh, gross receipts tax for medical marijuana and a 10% for recreational marijuana. So will we have brick and mortar recreational marijuana stores in LA City? It's very possible, yes. Who decides that? Is that Measure M or is that Measure M gives the authority to the city council to decide? It's a very good question. Yeah. Absent any, any sort of um, propositions, the city has the authority to do that. Okay. Measure N, which was put a on the- N. N as in Nancy was put on the ballot by, um, by the, the industry that, that is currently what they call the Prop D compliant I understand, marijuana yes. yeah. folks. And they wanted to make sure the city did some regulation. Right. They put one on that many of us felt would have extended the monopoly unfairly that they uh. have. And it, and it set in stone a number of regulatory features and took away some of that authority from the city to make tweaks and changes as things so move So let's over. presume in our final moments, N fails, M passes. So M passes. So the city said, hey, we want to we want to make sure we have control. Let's put the tax on the ballot, but let's do some aspirational things. I see. And give the power back to the city after having public comments. So we have a whole process. We're going to have neighborhood councils, public hearings, vet it, and make sure we come up with a regulatory structure. And you'll come back works. and talk about it? Absolutely. Okay, his uh, name is Bob Blumenfield. He is a city councilman in the city of Los Angeles, representing significant portions of the San Fernando Valley, where we are today. I'm Brad Pomerantz, Local Edition.